Hello and welcome to this AE Basics Extra tutorial in which we're just looking at a bit more repeater work. Uh, in the previous tutorial we created this item that repeated across and down screen and we scaled it in. And I'm just going to turn the eyeball off for that layer and I'm going to create a piece of text. So I'm going to take my text tool and I'm just going to click at the top of my screen and I'm going to use the pound sign. That's the British pound sign, not the American, I think you call that the pound sign, don't you? But we're using the British pound sign. And I'm going to actually delete the layer below so we don't get confused. And there we've got the British pound sign. And I'm going to right click on that. And I'm going to go to create shapes from text. OK, and when I create shapes from text, a new shape has been created with that outline. And I can actually delete the text layer. You'll notice the eyeball's off anyway. So I can select the text layer and simply hit delete because I don't need it anymore. And when I open that up, you'll see that I've got contents. And under contents, I've got the pound sign. Open up the pound sign and I've got transforms for that pound sign. And you'll see that when I actually click on those transforms, there's the anchor point at the bottom. Just go to my selection tool. And with the anchor points, I can do things like rotate it in place and have a play with the item and scale it and move it, and whatever I need to do. However, this is about the repeater. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the layer at the top because I want the repeater to become below everything apart from the transforms for the layer. And I'm going to go Add, Repeater. And immediately it comes in its default settings of three repetitions at space of 100 in the X across the screen dimension. So I'm going to open up my repeater. And I'm going to open up its transforms. Now I'm just going to give myself a little bit more space here. Because what you need to see is I've got transforms for the whole layer. I've got transforms for the repeater. And I've got transforms for the shape. So I actually have three lots of transforms, which means I can do different things depending on how I use them. Now, what I'm going to do to start off with is I'm going to create 12 copies, which are going off screen. And what I want to do is I want to make those go into a circle. Now, to start off with, and this is actually probably the most important point to remember, is if you want a perfect circle, what you need to do is make sure that all 12 copies are directly over themselves, over the initial one. You don't want any X position or Y position changes. You'll see why in a minute. So what you do is you go to the repeater and you go to the repeater transform position. Right click on that and click reset. And that takes position to 0, 0. All of the shapes are on top of each other so it just looks like one shape. Then we can go down to the repeater transforms rotation. And, well, we know we've got 12, and we want to make a perfect circle. So we can use the math transformation inside After Effects to make this work out. So you can click in where it says 0 times plus 0, 0. Click in that second box. And then do 360 divided by however many repetitions you've made. Now, I've made 12, but if I could have made 24, or whatever the number is under Copies, that's 360 divided by, if I do 12, Enter, You'll see that it comes out at 30 degrees, which we could have done ourselves, but also we've got a complete circle. I've got the original shape just showing here, the, the outline, the path. You can turn that off with this button here. Now, to make it zoom out, to make it expand, you then go to the anchor point. And what we're going to want to do is the anchor point for the repeater, we're going to want to move in the Y direction. We're going to kind of want to pull it down. OK, so you've got X and Y. Y is the second one. And when we start to pull it down, pull it out, you'll see that we get the end result that we're looking for. However, we can still go back up to rotation for the shape. And although we have this look here because of the repeater, we can still make the individual shapes rotate in space to get some very interesting and unusual looks. I'm just going to reset that particular rotation. Now, if we want to move the item up and down, you go to the repeater transforms, and we start going X and Y position, the whole thing starts to go very weird. And that's not what we're going to want to achieve when we're using the transforms for position. We can play with that in a minute to, to, to do something else, but I'm just going to right click it and reset. However, when we go to position for the actual item, you'll see that we can make the whole thing come in and come out and move around in different ways because we are using the X and Y position for
for the shape itself. And this is really the key point of what I want to show you. It is important to realize that you have all three transform sets available to you. The transform for the shape, the transform for the repeater, and the transform for the layer itself. Because if you want to move the item sideways, left and right, you'll see that I can't do that by using the positional. I can get this wonderful look and I can play with things zooming in and zooming out. I can't make it go left and right. However, when I go down to the layer itself, position, X and Y, I can move the whole thing around, up and down, side to side, and actually start to have the interesting animations taking place as I play with the various different transform effects for the shape, for the repeater, or for the layer. So I'm just going to reset that particular position value. Okay, so what about making this come out as a straight line? What we need to do, I'm going to take my current time indicator to the beginning, is we need to animate position and rotation. So rotation is set at 30 degrees, which is giving us the perfect circle in our repeater, but position is at 0, 0. If I click position and rotation at this point, which is my start point, and I go forward I'm a second, and at a second I click the X parameter, for position because I want this to go across the screen and take that back to its default 100. At the moment it will look terrible but if I take rotation down to 0 you'll see that it's going to go across screen. So we get this animation where it starts at a circle and then goes out to straight. And then if you want to move it, how do you move it? Well we could play with offset perhaps to move it across the screen a little bit. It's one option. Just turn the path on so I can see where the beginning was. There it is. There's the beginning. Or alternatively, again, as I said, you can go down to the, to the transforms for the layer and move it backwards and forwards from the layer and up and down. Okay. One of the other things that's going to be affected quite a lot, I'm just going to go back to my original settings here and uh, come back on screen, is playing with scale. Now, if I turn my stopwatch off, if I play with scale for the original shape, everything's going to be affected evenly. So everything's going to go bigger, everything's going to go smaller. And if I play with scale for the layer, you'll see that the whole thing as a group scales in and scales out. So one can be a zooming effect, the other one can be an emphasis effect, making the whole thing look bigger and smaller. But if you start to play with scale for the repeater, you get a completely different look. So if I take scale out, you'll see that the items seem to go forward in and out of space. Okay, And you can also then go to the offset to make things then come through and so they can come in and come off by using the offset. Okay, So you can see that by playing with these various transforms you can create some amazing animations simply by playing with things like scale, rotation, position and of course I did position X going across if you wanted it to come down you would have animated position down in the Y direction and you've still got the other bits and pieces, you know, changing the opacity at the end and the beginning. Certainly if you're making things go through screen, we're using the offset, uh, using the opacity as a sort of a fade in can be a really good way of doing it. If you do happen to create too many copies, you get a slightly weirder look. If you then play with scale, having created lots of copies, and you can make everything come through in a really kind of multiple look. Okay, so just be aware that there's an awful lot of things that you can do to create your shapes, move them around, move them around screen, using all the different properties for the different transforms. And I think really if there's anything from this tutorial that you ought to bear in mind is that don't forget that you've got transforms within transforms within transforms. And by playing with the different properties in the different transforms, you can certainly create some very, very different looks as you're moving around and playing with the whole thing. Uh, one last thing, if you get to this stage where you, it's not rotating around the center for your layer, um, one of the things I've done fairly recently is, uh, I'm just going to reset my rotation there, is I've said, right, well, I've changed my anchor point here for, say, the repeater. I can select my anchor point in Control or Command C to copy, go down to my transforms for the layer, Command or Control V, that's move the whole layer up, so I need to move my layer down a bit, but when I do my rotation at this point, you'll see that my rotation is going to be right away from the middle. And I can really, you are feeling sleepy. Anyway, have a play, enjoy it, but remember, transforms 
of the various different items so for the shape for the layer and for the repeater are going to create very different results and you can have a lot of fun by playing with these various transforms I hope you found this tutorial useful and that you'll use this very powerful repeater effect in your own motion graphics work my name's Andrew Davis and thank you for watching